Uh, well, it's Labor Day weekend. Always one of my favorite weekends. It kind of kicks off the, the hunting season for those of us that are outdoorsmen. That's our, that's our thing. Labor Day weekend. The big weekend go work on your hunt clubs, finish everything up, and dove hunting, you know, just, just the whole deal, it's always been a favorite weekend of mine, I had a lot of plans, but uh, those plans got changed, I had a sickness in my entire household, easy for me to start getting angry and frustrated and why this weekend? Why does it have to be this weekend? And the whole reason I wanted to do this video was a buddy of mine, I'll call his name because he's not the type to be, you know, embarrassed or anything like that. He's made public his situation, but a real good buddy of mine, LaVon, he he sent me a message and uh, asked me to pray for him. He was having a procedure and having some things looked at that may not be favorable as far as the doctors are saying anyway. And uh, just for me to lift him up in prayer. And then he, uh, after the private message to me, it was maybe a few hours later, maybe the next day, I can't remember, it's all weeks now, blur. But <clears throat> he made a pretty lengthy post um, on social media, explaining in detail his situation, and quoting scripture, and speaking, speaking life and total healing to his situation. Um, I know Yvonne pretty well. He's got a big old heart. He loves Jesus, I can tell you that. His wife, himself, they're both, both believers. Very devout, faithful Christians. And, you know, I read that, what, at first when I got his message, I was like, oh man, I'm on. You know, you immediately, you know, want to that fear and anxious thoughts and negative thoughts enter your mind, but which that's okay that they they're going to enter our mind. But the thing about a believer is, is it's not good for them to linger. And I truly believe that if you have a true relationship with Jesus Christ, they're not going to linger. So I was encouraged as I was praying for him and then when I returned the post to him on his post. Um, but it got me to thinking about how I was being you know, disgruntled because I was sick. My family was sick and it ruined my plans this weekend. So <clears throat> my throat's like sandpaper right now. But it, you know, I was, I was just convicted. Uh, you know, Lord, when you think you got problems, you know, LeVon facing a pretty serious situation right here. But the way he's approaching it, let's see, you see, he's already won. I think I told him in so many words in that post. Um, you know, as a true believer in Christ, there's no situation in life where we really lose. We ultimately win. And, and it got me to thinking about, I wanted to do something for him other than just type praying, you know, like millions of people do, and most of them never even pray. I want to do something more. And, and it got me thinking about doing a video, and I've wanted to do something like this for a long time. Just something in, inspirational, talking about Christ, and, 
just never really had not in one and then my good buddy lifelong buddy Jimbo. He lost his mama. And it's easy. And it's normal. It's okay to you get sad, you get upset. There's anger at first, of course, when you lose, especially our mom. Uh, you know, but they had known this was coming with Jimmy's mom. And he made a post, and of course, referenced Christ all throughout the post. And that kind of sealed the deal. I said, yeah, I think I'm going to do something. Heck, you know, here they are going through what they're going through, but they made a choice to go public through social media and give it to God publicly. You know, it made my situation, you know, what, sick over the, over a long holiday weekend, come on. And I'm so thankful for all I've got, where I'm at, who I am. Karen and Caleb, I mean, I would have nothing I have now without Christ. I wouldn't have my life. I mean, right now I'm sitting at the bottom of the hill right up there across the cornfield through the woods I was living in a house July 24th 2004 was the night I almost took my life but I picked up the phone and called my sister told her to come get me I was thinking some crazy thoughts and she came and got me and took me home up to her home in Hendersonville the next morning July 25, 2004, I went to Fair Haven Baptist Church and ran slow jog to the altar and gave my life to the Lord. All the things in my life that I used as an excuse to put off another day to make that decision. I say all the things, but I want to put a magnifying glass on my addictions. My addictions were immediately gone that morning at that altar. No 12-step program, no process, no weaning. I walked in that church, I had it. I walked out set free. When God does something like that in a person's life, something that's tangible, that you physically feel and experience such an enormous difference and change in your life immediately, and you know it inside, that's proof that he's alive and he can save you. And that's what he did, he saved me. He saved me from all that. All that that I kept telling myself for years I had to work on before I got right with the Lord. No, 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 that was so wrong. But the process over the next year or so, I got rid of a lot of baggage, a lot of shame, a lot of unforgiveness, a lot of anger, a lot of hatred. Um, I was a good old boy. But I just wasn't a great man. And I didn't know what I was going to say. And all this is probably too long. I guess I'll have to do a YouTube or something. But um, it's all about choices, I guess, is, is what I wanted this to be about. Is, is I could have chose to water in my sickness all weekend and be miserable. But two friends who are struggling life issues a whole lot greater than mine right now made the choice to publicly give it to the Lord and uh, those two guys 
God's encouragement. And that's another one of the perks of being a believer is you have brothers in Christ that are there to lift you up and encourage you. And a lot of times they do it even when they don't mean to, when they're not trying. Lamont's going to be good regardless of the outcome. He's good. Jimmy's going to heal. He's going to be good. He's going to miss his mama. He'll always miss his mama. But he didn't lose his mama. He knows where she's at. If you know where somebody's at, they ain't lost. So, I guess probably the last thing I want to say is maybe to those that might watch and I know a small handful watch this but there could be one person that watches this that hasn't made a decision for Christ hasn't made that choice and that's what it is a choice I want you to think about something for a minute think about it hard if me as a, as a believer happens to be wrong about Christ and salvation and heaven and hell and that we are eternal beings and we have a soul if I'm wrong about all of that then the moment I take my last breath I never know I was wrong decision for Christ because of that belief but if all of that isn't true there is no Christ there is no heaven we just turn into worm dirt I'll never know now on the flip side those of you that well you believe in God you go to church you know you, you, you go on Easter all about going to church and not. It's that relationship and making that choice. If you're one of those that have never made the choice because you really don't believe there's a heaven, not really, not a heaven and a hell. And we really don't live forever. I mean, that's forever a long time. Eternity. What? Uh, if you have a problem believing that, just can't grasp it. Um, maybe that's part of what's holding you back. Here's the thing. When you take your last breath, you will know that you made a mistake and you will pay for it for eternity. I want you to think about that. This short 75, 80, 85 years we're living here. Living it without Christ, not making that decision. Is it worth eternity? Just something to think about. Just another choice.